questions. Question orale. The Prime Minister wasted eight months. Eight months ago, Canadians found out about the scope of Beijing's interference in helping the Liberals during two elections. He helped his ski buddy, who's a member of the Trudeau Foundation, in order to cover up this exact... Who's gone now, special rapporteur, bye-bye. His reporter has stepped down. So we need a public inquiry. The Conservative Party is ready to work with all parties, including the government, in order to launch one. Will the government call a public inquiry so that we can know all of the details about Beijing's interference? The Honourable Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs. I appreciate my colleagues' desire to work as a team collaboratively. We've said since the beginning that a public inquiry is an option. Mr. Johnston recommended against a public inquiry and explained that decision. He explained that it would be difficult given national security uh, matters. We are willing to discuss and collaborate with the opposition to discuss a possible public inquiry, what the mandate might be of such a commission, and what the conditions would be. And we look forward to those discussions. Leader of the opposition, rents have doubled since the prime minister came into office. Mortgages have doubled since this prime minister Mm -hmm. became prime minister. They've spent half a billion dollars, which made inflation rates skyrocket. And in fact, they are preventing the building of affordable housing units. Will the prime minister cancel his inflationary policies, balance the books and cut paperwork and red tape so that we can build affordable housing for Canadians? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, last week, across the country... Mr. Speaker, how is she back from Ukraine, but Trudeau isn't? It was very dangerous. We saw just how important it is to take action for the climate. What are the Conservatives doing? Did they work with us to support Canadians in this very important time through all these dangers? Do they support our industrial plan and economic plan to build a green economy? No, they did not support us. What they were doing was playing partisan games, and it's very irresponsible, Mr. Speaker. The opposition leader is not going to stop forest fires, Mr. (laughs) Speaker. The prime minister has doubled housing costs by a half trillion dollars of inflationary deficits uh, and by giving billions of dollars to local gatekeepers who block housing construction with the second slowest housing permits of any country in the entire OECD. Now, uh, the deficits the the prime minister is running risk increasing interest rates further and causing people to lose their homes to higher mortgage prices. Will the government introduce a balanced budget to bring down inflation and interest rates so that Canadians don't lose their homes? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to the OECD, what the Leader of the Opposition should know and should be sharing with Canadians is that last week the OECD forecast that Canada would have the strongest economic growth... Oh my God, there she goes again. ...23 and 24. But what is truly appalling, Mr. Speaker, and frankly really disappointing, is that these Conservatives, at a time when forest fires have been raging across our country would prefer to play partisan games rather than support our sensible measures to build the clean economy we desperately need. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The the question was about the doubling of housing costs. This Prime Minister has brought in a half trillion dollars of inflationary spending, which doubled rent costs, mortgage payments, and needed down payments for the average house. And now the uh, IMF says that Canada is the country most at risk of a massive mortgage default as our households have the most debt as a share of GDP of any country in the G7. That debt is about to collide with soaring interest rates driven by this government's deficits. Will they eliminate the deficits, balance the budgets to bring down inflation and interest rates before Canadians lose their homes? Oh, man. We need more advocacy for this. Mr. Speaker, I'm glad to hear the Leader of the Opposition cite the IMF. 
And I hope that that means he is aware that it is the IMF which confirms that Canada has the lowest deficit in the G7 and the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7 by some measure. But Mr. Speaker, I really have to point out to the Canadians listening to us the appalling behavior of this reckless and irresponsible opposition, which has been blocking sensible, important measures to support Canadians at a critical time. Stuff that's going to bankrupt us. It's not just homeowners, Mr. Speaker. Because this government has been giving billions to local gatekeepers who block affordable house, housing construction, and because their inflationary policies have doubled the rent, uh, the students are now living in squalor. You used to be able to get a, an apartment a full apartment for 840 bucks before this Prime Minister. Now, CBC reports, CBC is reporting <laughs> that a student from Guelph has had to pay $840 just for a room in an apartment she shares with six other students that is mold and insect infested and doesn't even Shame. have running water. Shame. Will they reverse their inflationary policies so the Canadians don't have to... The Honourable Deputy Prime... That's so expensive. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to point out to Canadians the utterly irresponsible behaviour of this Conservative Party in the House last week, blocking our budget legislation. The Prime Minister over the weekend made a very important trip to Ukraine <laughs> to show Canada's support for Ukraine at this crucial moment. A very generous contribution to Ukraine. Mr. Speaker, blocking our legislation which would indefinitely deny most favoured nation trading status to Russia and Belarus. Whose side are they on, Mr. Speaker? The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, David Johnson made an honourable decision in stepping down to protect people's trust in democracy. That said, he should never have been put in that position. S starting in February, both Canadians and this House began calling for a public and independent commission of inquiry into Chinese interference, an inquiry whose commissioner would be chosen by the House to study both electoral interference and the issues of financing, threats, espionage and intimidation of the diaspora. It was the right choice and remains the right choice. Will the government establish this commission before the end of the session? Because time is ticking. The Honourable Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs. Mr. Speaker, we look forward to working with our colleague from La Prairie, his party leader, and other party leaders. We will work together in order to strengthen Canadians' trust and confidence in our democratic institutions. Mr. Johnston's stepping down gives us an, the opportunity to take partisan fighting down a few notches and collaborate together to work on a public process for the next few steps. We look forward to working with opposition parties to discuss how we can do so responsibly and seriously. Thanks for watching the video to the very end. If you'd like to subscribe, I've made it very easy. You can do so by clicking right there. If you'd like to watch another House of Commons highlight clip, you can do so by clicking right there. And if you'd like to subscribe, to my main channel, Mr. Sunshine Baby, where it's all Canadian political news, and you can do so by t tapping up there. Um, subscribing is absolutely free. There's a button down below that says subscribe. If you'd like to join and become a member and financially contribute, you could do so as well. Thank you so much for watching this video.